Our big story this morning, Democrat Kirsten Sinema has made history. She will be the first woman to represent our state in the U.S. Senate. She's waking up in Washington, D.C. after claiming victory last night. We can do this differently for our country, for our future, for Senator McCain, and for each other. I think we must. Cinema giving a glimpse at her plans moving forward. Team 12 political insider Bram Resnick joins us in Studio 12A. Now, Bram, I remember when I first got to 12 News and I would booth your show on the weekends and you had Kirsten Cinema on all the time. You guys have had a relationship for a long time. You've interviewed her countless times. What do you think her being elected means for Arizona. You know her very well, so what do you expect from her? Uh, I think you will see the candidate we saw during this election. She understands the state very well. I'll say this, uh, she's the most gifted politician I have ever met. Why is that? Uh, she is smart, exceptionally smart. She is shrewd, understands the way politics works. You know, a lot of people questioned, oh, she's just gonna go to the left. One of the things she brags about when she was in the legislature, and she was there for about six years, yep. uh, was working with people like Russell Pierce, Russell Pierce, if you know that story, he is the most, one of the most hated men among Democrats, at least. And she would brag about working with him and other Republicans who many Democrats wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. I think she's going to do exceptionally well in the United States Senate. She is that gifted. She knows, does indeed know how to work both sides of the aisle. Is she a Democrat at heart? Yes. There's okay. no doubt about that. Let's make one thing clear. But she's an independent, and what we heard in that soundbite there just a moment ago was her claiming the legacy uh, of Senator John McCain. Very interesting for a Democrat uh, to be doing that. And I also want to point out another first or a second. Kirsten Cinema will be the second LGBTQ member of the United States Senate. Didn't get a lot of discussion here during the campaign because it, it's not an issue. Nationally, it's getting a lot of play this morning. Let's, uh, I interviewed Neil Giuliano last night. Neil Giuliano was the first openly gay uh, mayor in the United States in Tempe 24 years ago. I asked him what he thought of Kirsten Sinema's election to the Senate. Of course it's historic. Anytime someone who lives with such authenticity and presence uh, with their life and is open with everybody with their life, sends a message to those kids who may be LGBTQ, to their families and friends that uh, number one, it's okay. And number two, you can do anything you want in life. And again, she didn't make a big deal of that during the campaign. Her opponents didn't either. But you know, I was just saying a minute ago to you off camera, look at Arizona. First gay mayor in the country, second LGBTQ member of the United States Senate. There's something about us here, we're different. People there's, don't give and, us enough credit. They don't, they don't. They there's really a, there's don't. There's kind of a live and let live ethic. I think it's a here. bigger deal that it wasn't a big deal. I know. Mm -hmm. It was almost like people, there was a, a respect. Mm -hmm. It felt a little bit like there was a respect between the two candidates that we're just not even gonna go there. There was, and no, nobody made it an issue, and you know, it's your private life. Yeah. It's your private life. Your we got to talk about Martha McSally now. Um, you have been, you've heaped praise upon her for the way she's handled defeat in this mm -hmm. election. And we kind of hinted to it at the beginning of the show that it might be because she's kind of in line to be appointed to the seat that John Kyle's sitting in right now. What's next for McSally? Good question. Uh, a lot of people think she'll be uh, appointed by Doug Ducey to the U.S. Senate as his initial appointee, John Kyle, appears likely to retire late this year, early next. Uh, Martha McSally is believed to be in line for that. I've heard several names brought up. Uh, I think there's some challenges in appointing her to the U.S. Senate. She just lost a tough Senate race. A lot of those negative ads we heard, millions, tens of millions of dollars worth, are still going to be ringing in voters' ears. We don't know what 2020 is going to look like when she would have to run again. Whoever, yes. Whoever's in that seat in 2010, the McCain, 2020, the McCain seat, is going to have to run again it's not guaranteed. in just two years. Right. And this world's going to look a lot different. I guarantee you the political world's going to be a lot different in just two years and whether somebody who supported Trump so openly this time around can succeed in two years is a very open question. This was such a divisive campaign. It would be so interesting to see those two women have to work together. If appointed. You know, I tried to get at that during this campaign. They were both members of Congress for four years together. Kirsten Sinema was there for six. To get a sense of whether they had any kind of relationship and I can tell you I got the sense there was nothing. Yeah. Maybe they were eyeing each other warily because they knew this campaign, this battle was coming. 
I see no connection between them, no idea they'll work together, which is very, we've had Republicans in that seat. And don't forget, yeah. one thing we haven't mentioned, a Democrat has not been sent to the U.S. Senate by Arizona voters 30 in years. 30 years. Yeah. Right. I did talk to uh, Martha McSally about her relationship with Kirsten Center. She says that they would see each other in the gym. In the gym. That's about it. Yes. Both triathletes. Yes. <laughs> Bo both very focused women. They're a lot alike. A lot alike. A lot alike in many ways. Yeah. Have great personal stories. Mm -hmm. And yet politically, I just didn't see it Oil happening. And water. All right, Bram, we teased the viewers earlier in the show. We got to come through for them. We got to talk about the Secretary of State race. You say this could be maybe the most important race in our state. It's a big deal. A lot of people forget that the Secretary of State, and let's pause for a second. There are the, re uh, the, the results right now. Katie Hobbs, Democrat, state senator, leading Steve gainer uh, by less than 6,000 uh, How many votes, votes are left out there? Uh, 170,000. So still a lot. Oh a lot, but St Katie Hobbs has made up 50,000 votes. Which is incredible. Netted 50,000 votes over the last five, six days. Because we talked about this right after election night that it just didn't look like she would ever mm -hmm. catch up. It the, looked like it was Steve Gaynor. The Associated Press declared it for Katie Hobbs, but as we saw with Kirsten Sinema. For Gaynor, rather, right? Uh, sorry, Steve Gaynor. Yeah. As we saw with uh, Kirsten Sinema and other Democratic candidates, they've gained a lot of votes uh, in the early ballots. But back to your question. Uh, Secretary of State is the number two job in the state. If Governor Doug Ducey were to leave office, the Secretary of State would take over mm. five times in the last four decades. That has happened. The governor left office early four times. It was the Secretary of State because of a quirk in the law. One of those times it was the Attorney General. So that's another thing about Arizona. Our governors tend to leave in the middle of their terms. <laughs> Holy smoke. So it's possible. Wow. It All could right. happen. Bram Resnick, thank you so much for your insider scoop because no one knows AZ politics better. If than you're not guy. following this guy on Twitter, you're missing out on a whole sphere of political uh, nuggets that, that we don't have time to squeeze into yeah. these shows. All Those right, pictures Brand. of my dogs. A and yeah. that, that's a sell, right? <laughs> He's got corgis. They're, corgis. Cute. They're cute. All right. Six